Okay, so here we are. We are back for another game. This one's going to be a little different. I have been doing them ranked multiplayer on Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, but um, we're going to we're gonna not do that this time. We're going to do something a little different, show a game that I played with some friends um, on Age of Empires 2 HD. So what we have here, we have two teams of three on Arabia. This is me. I am playing as the Indians, and I am on the edge this side. My team's pocket player is Mr. Black Templar here in the red. He is playing as um, the Malians, although ironically he thought he was playing as the Mayans. Uh, so he's going to go for archers early in the game. Uh, that's a lot of idle time there, Mr. Red. Uh, but yeah, and then our other player on the other side is going to be Greeny405, who's in the blue, and he is actually playing as the Mayans. <laughs> so yeah. And then on the other team, on the side, we've got in green pitch black, who's playing as the Britons here. And then we've got in the yellow, in the pocket, we have got Stibbs 3, whatever the numbers are, playing as the Koreans, I believe. Yes, the Koreans. And then in the purple, we have yet another Stibbs, who is playing as the, uh, the Aztecs. So, yeah. <clears throat> So we're on Arabia. It's a 3v3. It's a standard game. This is a low-level game, of course. So uh, as Indians, we're going to just bump up the speed here at the start. So as Indians, I am, of course, going to go for uh, the strategy I've gone for more or less often than not. Um, we're going to go fast castle into camels, and we're going to try and do some raiding right away. Um, and, you know, as often is the case... Uh, and as I've said before, really, none of us are particularly good here, so, yeah. But overall, the starts are okay. I'm not totally sure what's going on here, not having, you know, a mill or a lumber camp, not taking your sheep. Uh, I don't know why we've got all these houses up here. Uh, but he can hold 35 population. Oops, but he can hold 35 population now. Uh he probably won't get to 35 population in Dark Age, but hey, he's got enough houses for it. And he's now got 250 wood, but is not building a lumber camp or a mill yet. Not sure what he's saving. Oh, he's got a mining camp going up instead. Not totally sure what the thought process was there, but hey, you know, he, he, he is producing villagers. That's the most important thing. Um, up here for our green opponent, we've got... You know, we've once again, oops, we've got a little bit of a, we do have a lumber camp. I'm not sure why we're taking this straggler tree when there's a perfectly good lumber camp up there. But we took our, we at least took the the, the sheep, taking some berries, building a barrack. So we're getting on the right track here. Um, just so you know, this blue player here, he is the newest of this crew. Uh, he is probably, I think this is only like the third or fourth game he's ever played. So uh, we're just going to not even pick on him even in jest <laughs> um, not great but anyways you can see for myself I'm off to a pretty solid start um, I did have an issue fighting my sheep which are right here which ironically so if we put on the fog of war just barely couldn't find them which was hugely frustrating to me but we cried it off uh, so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna click up at 28 population. We can see we, you can see we've got five on that wood line. We've just sent our fifth to this wood line, and then after that, we've already got three on gold. So we'll make a few more that we'll put onto food, and we're gonna be in the clear. So we'll speed it back up here. Um, yeah. So once again, we've got all these houses in a line. Um, not really sure what the thought processes with these houses mr green um you know good for you you have enough space for 30 population you've got enough to get all the way through dark age i don't know why you built them here instead of like maybe up here as part of a wall or you could have put them here and you could have walled off that spot or right here and walled off that spot not totally sure what the thought process is here also you got a pretty long idle time there my dude uh, but you know it happens it happens these things happen to the best of us of course. So, yeah. So you can see that Mr. Purple here is the first one into the Feudal Age. Um, that, of course, didn't bother me a great deal because I'm going for the Fast Castle. I'm on my way up to Feudal Age, and we're going to be able to get up to Castle Age almost immediately after our arrival in Feudal Age. 
so everyone else is getting into Feudal Age beating me up, but I'm not too worried about that. Once again here, I'm not totally sure why we're putting the houses there. Why not put them out here and give yourself at least a little bit, like you could have lined them up right here. You'd have blocked off something or right there and you'd have blocked, could have lined them up right here and right there and you could have had something blocked off there. Obviously there's still a huge gap here that's not really going to be walled, but at least then you know they can't get through or out there. Or right there even. I mean, shoot, even just put it right. Well, that's actually blocked off either way. Um, yeah, so at least we've got one person here who's putting their houses in such a way that it blocks some stuff off. Although I think that is a gap there. Um, I suppose that Mr. Yellow does have a house wall. It's just not terribly useful because it's not actually really blocking anything off of value. So, anyways... Everyone, once again, is beating me up to the Feudal Age. I think I'm going to beat up yellow and blue. But, yeah. You can see, though, we've got a pretty good setup here. Um, as far as... Uh, oh. A um, little late on the construction of my barracks, but we've got all of our... We've got good food eco. We've got... We're going to have good gold eco. Uh, our first two villagers that come out of here are going to go straight to gold, and then we're going to get a couple of stables up. Um, for what it's worth... I'm going to kind of mess up my attempts at walling here as well. Uh, so, yeah, I should have put this house out here as well. And then I'm going to try and wall up down here, and it's going to kind of fail miserably. So I will be an equal opportunity mocker of the wallings. But so, like, I just as an example, now I think there's a gap there yet. I'm going to put another house there. But even something as simple as, just so you know that people can't get through one spot, and then we're putting our blacksmith over here, you know, even... That sort of stuff, it can matter in the long run. So, I should have taken two villagers to build um, my two stables, but it is what it is. I didn't do that. Uh, but, we're now almost to the point where we can click up to Castle Age already with our two buildings. Got a little bit of idle time there. Got him back on track, though. And now we have enough, and we are clicking up to Castle Age well before anybody else is going to. And we're going to strike over here at Mr. Green, who is, of course, playing as the Britons. Um... Logically, he has built an archery range. The Britons obviously are good at archers, so he's built an archery range. Um, one thing, I'm not totally sure why he's taking stone up here. Uh, oh, when there's a, looks like to me like a safer one down there. Uh, he's also going to end up going for this gold out there for reasons that I'm not totally sure when, you know, there's a gold right there for him to take. Also, not sure why he's only got one person on gold, but anyways... Um, he does have a decent eco setup. Once again, taking a straggler tree there. Not totally sure why you're taking that one instead, but it is what it is. Uh, continuing to look around, um, you know, he, he hasn't had to build any more houses yet here in the yellow. That's a positive for sure. He's hunting out here. Having some issues there, looks like. <laughs> that food is just decaying away. Um, yeah, having some issues there. And then, uh, you know, Purple Pry has the best setup for them. Um, as far as right now, he's actually got some walling up. He's building the correct buildings. Um, you know, he's just generally getting some stuff a little better set up. But not a disaster. The only person who's a disaster is in the blue here. But once again, this is like his third game ever playing. So we're going to forgive him for that. Um, should build a second mining camp over here. And no reason to have one. Also need some more on gold. Uh, also, more farms would be a good idea as well. So, I've arrived in Castle Age. And we're going to start producing camels almost right away. I guess not right away because I'm not producing them yet. Hmm. Almost right away, very quickly, we'll start producing camels. And then we're going to move out. Uh, you can see I have started to wall. So, I've got these houses there. I'm not sure if there is a hole there or not. Clearly, I decided there wasn't because I didn't build a wall there. Then we built um, this palisade. That boar, so I actually lost a bo uh, villager to the first boar that I lured because it was far away. I decided I wasn't going to deal with it anymore. And then we wall up this one successfully. But then I'm going to try and wall up here, and I'm actually going to just leave a hole. So we are finally producing some camels, which is good. And then we're going to strike at our opponent who is here in the green because obviously he's the closest one to us. So that's who we're going to go after. And you can see he's got a couple of places that are ripe for raiding. 
this stone is pretty far away, this gold is pretty far away, and that's going to be a weak villager following the wolf attack. Oh, did you not get... He didn't get Loom. Ooh. Research Loom, people, because he's about to lose that villager. <laughs> Oh, will he save it? Oh, 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 no. Bummer. But, you know, so he's got a gold here he's taking. He's got a stone up here he's taking. His wood line is a little bit far away as well. And once again, he's not using his houses to actually wall up. He's just kind of building them in a line. And as you can see, the camels are on the way. We've just got six camels plus our scout. Uh, so, not a ton. And then we're going to try and boom behind it. And so, the thing with this is going to be... This is going to be kind of a... So, look at his fog of war. He now sees that they have arrived, and it's going to be a bit of a slow reaction time from him. We're going to get both of these villagers. Uh, he finally sends archers over. The bad news for him is that he's got... I'm, in, I'm Indian, so my camels have plus one pierce armor. And then he decides not to pursue. And once again, my man, you put a couple houses here instead. I can't run up there. And as you can see, I'm just running up, and I'm going to run a circle and come right back in. We're going to just keep trying to hit him. Um, you can also see over here that Purple has some Eagle Wars, and he's going to go around and do a little bit of raiding as well. Uh, once again, it's going to be a bit of a slow reaction time here. I decide to go down here instead of up there, but he moves out of the way. I'm trying to think about going after his archers, but instead we're just going to target these two villagers that he sent back out here to this exposed gold instead of just this one, which is much safer. Um, so yeah, and then we're going to be able to go after some of his farmers, and he's got a bunch of them that are just idle right now. And this really is, um, <laughs> he rings the bell to try and get everybody in instead of just, you know, so even people that were not in danger are going back in. We're going to run away. Once again, we're going to run up here and we're just going to circle right back around. Once again, these Eagle Warriors are out here, but they're not, well, I guess they're Eagle Scouts at this point. Um, but he's sending them over to try and assist Green against my raiding. Once again, you can see we went up here. Then in a minute, we're going to go back in. I went back to build some farms up and such. We're going to go back to my perspective just for the time being. And you can see once again, we're going to dive right back in on him. Um, he's going to be a little bit more prepared this time. Notice he hasn't actually replaced the villagers that I killed previously, which obviously is not a great look. He's also going to forget to move his scout and lose it. Oh, nope, he didn't lose it there. Not quite. Um, got a archer that's all alone. And the other issue here is he is still in feudal age. And if you look here... He doesn't have any of his upgrades. He doesn't have fletching. He doesn't have the archer, the armor upgrades. So these archers really, obviously he can hide under the town center to try and keep me away. Uh, but those archers really are not much of a deterrent. I did think there were more eagles than there actually were. And that's one of the reasons I ran away there. Uh, had I realized there were only the four, I would have actually just turned around and fought it. Uh, it wouldn't have been a great fight for me, but I, I'm pretty sure that... I could have won because I've got, I think I've got, that's all the Castle Age upgrades on my camels. So I could have killed them and then just kept going. But for the time being, I run back. He's actually going to get into my base because once again, that's a hole right there. And also, this is obviously a hole as well. I'm also housed. So, you know, this is a trend from previously uh, in my other multiplayer games that I've talked about. When I'm doing my raiding and such, I need to do a better job of keeping my economy balanced. Uh, well, not just balanced, just keeping an eye on it. It's not really even a balance issue, but remembering to make houses, continue to make villagers, replace a lumber camp like that one or this one, which both really need replacing. Um, and something like so. Here comes these eagle, <laughs> these eagle scouts, and that's just a hole there. I just didn't wall it. For some reason, I built a market. At the time, I thought I didn't have one. So I started to build one, and he's going to kill that villager. Um, you can see I did go on to start raiding again, but I'm going to turn these camels around because, once again, I think that there's more eagles than there are because I did see these ones down here as well. So if I had known how few eagles there were, I probably would not have turned around, but I did just be safe, and we're producing more camels out of here. Um, purple really ought to have pushed this more. So I build a tower tower here with all my gold uh, miners in an attempt to try and keep them away. 
uh, which I guess he saw and decided he didn't want to mess with for some reason when one tower is not really going to stop it. There's the first one of them that reaches. Uh, well, second, my teammate in the red did reach Castle Age. But we put up a tower. Now we've got some camels back here. I'm not totally sure where he has gone off to, I don't think. Right. So I'm kind of over here. We're kind of looking around for him, trying to look for an engagement. There he is, and he's going to see them. I actually don't see them initially, so I don't engage because I'm stupid. Uh, but he clearly decides that this isn't worth it and decides to leave. Uh, I've got enough camels back here that I guess that's a decent decision, but he should have just dove in right away. He could have gotten at least one or two villager kills, potentially more if he'd gone to the wood line up there. And, yeah, but he's going to come over here and he's going to do some raiding on to red. It's going to be fairly successful. Um, and in the meantime, for myself, I've now got more camels, so we're going to go right back over and we're going to keep doing our thing um, and harassing. Once again, he still hasn't thought to just, you know, take a moment to palisade wall this bit, so we're going to be able to just keep running circles. And as you can see, purple is arriving over. Red does have at least some military, but it's not enough. Here, purple makes the correct decision and says, I don't care if you've got a crossbow, we're just going to dive in. And we're going to get a couple of kills. Briefly denies this castle as well, which is... And this is not the, the response to um, raiding, is to <laughs> send more villagers out to try and build the building when there's this many eagles. You're just getting them killed. And obviously those spearmen are not going to do enough. So we're over here, we're going to finally hit his wood line and his one stone miner. I don't know why you're bothering with the one stone there. Also, his archers are far enough out that I'm trying to get him, but I'm really trying to not have to make more camels if I can avoid it. So we're trying to avoid any fire from the town center if we can. And there's plenty of villagers up here that we can kill. He's also obviously got a couple of spearmen now, which is deterring me a bit. I could just fight them, but I don't yet. Uh, I really could have just fought them, because once again, he's got no upgrades. He rings the bell again there for some reason. Not sure why. Once again, some good raiding going on by Purple here. Finally, Red starts to get some numbers up that are going to be able to help deter that. Crossbows are not really the counter to Eagles, uh, but he's got enough that he is going to be able to get a few to push them back. So, not a fast response, um, and I'm not sure why Purple didn't try to kill more of those villagers, but at least a response from Red that's decent. Um, once again, we're just going to keep killing people. He finally has some guys back on this gold. He just runs them away, which is fine with me. Um, you know, feeling comfortable that even if you're not getting villager kills, you're getting some more idle time. And then I just set them to attack this house while he walks over. Um, then we're going to come down here. I'm just looking to see if he's on any other resources. If we look at my Fog of War, uh, I'm, I figure that he's got another wood line somewhere, so we're kind of looking for that, but obviously not finding it. I'm also back home. I did build a second and third town center, finally. The second one is up here, and the third one is going up down there. But once again, we're just going to kind of keep running circles, quite frankly, and getting a few pickoffs as well along the way. He rings the bell again so that even villagers that are not, so all these villagers are idled. Uh, yeah, not great. I was thinking to myself, oh, I'll destroy this farm. Left it with, like, two more hits available. And then I'm going to run up here, and once again, we're just going to loop around and go back. Everywhere else across the map, really not a lot of aggression. Red going with a little bit, which is good. Um, you know, crossbows against one making eagles not ideal but he does get a villager kill there and he's going to get a couple more i think so some decent back and forth there for green he's not getting any aggression back towards me which obviously not ideal we're going to come up here just try and hit the wood line again um i never did fix this wall uh which pretty foolish of me and also you can see I do not have enough population. I do not have the production out of my town centers that I really need. I should be well over 100 population at this point. And then once again, we're going to just run up here. He's going to stand still, and then we're going to come back down shortly. Got a bunch of idle time as well. Friello, um, he's got a castle here. He has no military units other than a scout somewhere, which isn't ideal. 
but you know, for the pocket player, you would like to see him maybe be a little more aggressive in building some stuff to come up and try and help his teammate who's getting attacked. Uh, but he doesn't, so it is what it is. Green is doing a decent job trying to repel this. He needs to get some upgrades. He finally got some upgrades for his archers. He should also be getting some upgrades for his spearmen, because that's going to actually come back to bite him a little later. He is putting up a castle, and I do not see it. Had I seen it, since he's only building it with one villager, I could have easily denied it, but I don't see it yet. So that is actually going to go up, and that's obviously going to put a bit of a crimp in my style here. Uh, and once again, looking across the rest of the map, they're all pretty much safe. We finally have some war wagons coming out from yellow. Uh, purple has a decent amount of military that he's been building. Those eagles, wherever they are, they're somewhere. Uh, blue, he's struggling a bit. But once again, early, like his third game, so we're not going to pick on him. Red's got a decent boom going here. Uh, should be producing more villagers than he is, but doing okay. Uh, and now that we've finally got multiple town centers up, I'm starting to get myself going a little bit. We're also starting to collect stones so that we can build a castle. So anyways, this castle is going to go up pretty shortly. I'm going to come up here and hit his stone finally. And once again, I still do not see this castle. Still would have had time to deny it there, but I don't see it. Which is really a bummer, obviously. Well, for me. We're going to kill this guy, though. But then after we kill him, we're going to start to go back in, and this castle is going to get finished, which is, yeah, that's an issue. But the good news is I am way ahead in terms of economy uh, than my opponent there, so we're going to be able to come down and hit him pretty much right away. I'm not sure what I was doing here. I think I had, let's see, I just had a, a monastery built, I think, so I had to come back here and build a monk and tell him to go get that relic and do a couple other things back home. Um, so, I start to construct my own castle there. Once again, this one is still not done. So we're coming down here. I figure, oh, he's far enough away that we can just attack here pretty soon, maybe. Um, oh, apparently I didn't think that. Yeah, we're trying to loop around and get through. And then, castle! So, nope! Turn around right away. We know that we've got a castle of our own that's going to be coming up here soon. Um, so we're pretty confident. And I've done a good job of keeping my numbers alive this whole time. So we've got a pretty decent force of camels at this point. And here come the villagers up. And this is a little bit risky. Would have been pretty easy for him to see this castle. Uh, but he doesn't, obviously. At the very least, he has wised up a little bit. Tried to move his forces somewhere where he thinks I'm going to come again. Once again, you could have just walled this off. Uh, would have been very easy to wall both of those off, and you would have had a better idea of where I was going to be coming from. But there's the castle. He's not going to see it. It was risky. He could have. And then we're going to create more camels because now I know, you know, enough, now that he's got a castle up, you know, not really going to be time to be doing raiding. Uh, it's going to be time to start really pushing. And you can also see I've clicked up to Imperial Age, so pretty obvious what we're going to go for. We're going to build trebuchets out of the castle to go after his castle, and we're going to try and mass some military up, and then we'll do a full-on push enough of this raiding. Once again, looking around, uh, Yellow sent one, two, ten war wagons up here to try and help. Not a lot, uh, especially given that I've got you know, Indian camels, uh, war wagons are not the ideal response to that, but it is what it is. Um, and then Purple got a pretty good economy going. Um, his score is lagging behind a bit, though, which is a, which is a little bit, well, it's not lagging behind that much, actually. That's just the team score. Um, so he's, he's got pretty good economy. You can see by the score that Green is having the biggest issue here, but my castle just went up, so now we're going to build a couple of stables. Uh, so we're easy. It's easy reinforcements. Here comes a pretty big squad of camels, and my scout's still there as well. And the reality is, given how his economy is in pretty poor shape, um, this is, it's pretty much over now that I've got that castle up for him. You look at his resources, though. He's got enough resources that he could be building more stuff. Uh, so 
I'm not totally sure what was going on. He also could have gotten more upgrades for his... And he's got 1,700 food. There's no reason for him not to have upgraded his spearman by now. Uh, and he does now see that castle there because it shot his villager. Um, so he tries to come out and engage here. I see that he's got no upgrades on these spearmen, so I'm not too worried about just diving in on them now. Um, I didn't know that the war wagons were here yet. However, I just saw those. And we're building a siege workshop there. But the trebuchet has started to fire, and we're just going to say, screw it, we're going to dive in on these guys. Uh, and that's what we're going to do, because we got to protect the trebuchet. And obviously now we've got stables up here, so we can reinforce right there. Pushes them back right away, and we're just going to play a little bit of cat and mouse. Try and draw them out of where the castle fire can help, but we're not too worried about diving in on the castle fire. Once again, uh, this is not the composition you want against Indian Camels. Indian Camels get the plus one pierce armor, so range units, and then also obviously they get a bonus versus the war wagons because they're cavalry. So it's just really not... It's not what you want. Really should have made more spearmen. Should have upgraded them. Uh, and maybe sent more than just a few war wagons over here. Uh, we, I think we've got another... There's the other trebuchet that has finally come out. Um... And once again, yellow should have really sent more up to help. Uh, like, you've got these. Should have sent those up right away. I don't know, because he's got plenty of resources. Once again, he's trying to send some crossbows up. But crossbows do almost no damage to trebuchets anyway, so that's really not even a worthwhile thing to do. And we're starting to take a few losses against the castle, but once again, we've got plenty of resources. So does my opponent there. I mean, look at all that. There's no reason for him not to be producing more. Uh, if you look at uh, Mr. Yellow here as well, look at all those resources. There's no reason for him not to have built a couple of barracks up by his ally here uh, and start producing spearmen or, well, pikemen at this point since he's in Castle Age. Uh, but now that the castle's gone, we just dive right in. No worries, and we're going to be able to clean this up pretty well. We're also producing some bombard cannons out of there. Uh, and once again, because we've got the stables up here, we're a lot less worried about keeping our numbers up necessarily. I know that my opponent is uh, in a rough way. And there's the reinforcements. Five more war wagons. We've got 5k wood, 3k gold, 2k gold, or 3k food, 2k gold. He hasn't clicked up to Imperial Age yet, and he sent five war wagons to try and assist against this push. Uh, that's that's not enough for your for your pocket player to be doing to help. Um, you know, I mean, it's something that you it's been pretty visible in other games I've played. Uh, I think one of the biggest things for newer players in multiplayer games, and I've seen it myself in the game I lost, it was a mistake I made as well. Uh, produce units, man. There's no reason to be floating that much of those resources. Uh, you know, at least click up to Castle Age or to Imperial Age. Uh, so there's no reason to be floating that many resources while your buddy's getting wasted. Uh, so I'm not sure why he tried to rebuild a town center there, but at the very least, Green does realize pretty quickly here that this is going to be a lost cause and he's going to move out and rebuild down in the south. So, yeah, that's pretty much blouses there for Green. Um, at least here, and there he goes. At the very least, that's a that's a one good decision. He gets the wood put into his lumber camp, and then he's going to relocate himself. Um, I should have been more aggressive in searching for these villagers, uh, so that they couldn't have gotten so many of them away. But I didn't, so we're just going to mop up all of those. So you can see, um, Red has discovered that he is in fact the Malians and not the Mayans. So he's created some Jibettos. He just did a little bit of raiding that we missed, unfortunately. Once again, purple at the very least. He is building a proper house wall. Um, that may be a little bit close in. You're limiting your expansion a little bit. But he at least is trying to do... He's doing the right stuff to try and defend himself. He's also got a castle up, which is good. So green is going to come down here is about and reform. Also with my camels. Oh my gosh, I should have come down here onto this. Whew! Could have killed so many, but I was too busy destroying houses. Uh, I Basically, I kind of figured that he was going to get away no matter what, so I figured we're going to house him and try and basically annoy him. Uh, so that's what we did. So that's kind of the first stage of the game done. Uh, you can see, once again, Green, he's got plenty of resources. So 
there's there was no reason for him not to produce more stuff back in his base in order to try and defend this. Green and yellow, you really should have produced more. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, you know, so like, you look at my resources, even though I've got the highest score, I've probably got the highest, i probably got the best economy going, um, but now I've got a ton of wood, which is often a mistake. I should be selling that, using it for some, but we're spending our food. We're spending our gold, more or less. Um, at the moment, I believe I'm saving up to get the heavy camel upgrade, but spend your resources, man. It doesn't do you any good sitting in the bank. You know, this isn't Dave Ramsey. You're not putting it into a 401k. Also, one smart decision by Yellow to just ditch this, this wood line, because that was going to get raided. Um, also, smartly by them, they do have some trade getting set up, which is good. Um, red comes over to try and assist with the finishing off of green. Uh, obviously not necessarily needed, but appreciated that they came over here. And then they're going to try and do some raiding with these crossbows. Uh, as much as anything, there you go. We've got the heavy camel upgrade in. So, yeah, so once again, plenty of resources. Produce more stuff, my dude. So, so like here, okay? Not as strong an economy for red. But he's got more military because he's been producing stuff. That's what you want to do, man. Produce things. He's also realized at this point that he's not Mayans and that going for archers is actually not the play. Uh, so he's kind of just looking for something to do with these crossbows before they die since he doesn't really want them actually anymore. So he's going to send these guys down here and look for something to raid. We're going to put the speed back up because we're going to go into a bit of a lull now. Um, so I built another castle back at home to try and defend there. We finally show up to where this wood line was. Disappointingly, uh, he's left. So these are going to have the Arbalest upgrade, and he's going to go look for something to raid. Um, me, on the other hand, I'm going to actually decide to kind of chill for a bit, build up before making a big push. He runs his archers into a castle there, which obviously not ideal. He's going to pick off, I think, one or two villagers over this tree line, which is a nice play. Uh, yellow, rebuild your lumber camps. Uh, but we got a bunch of elite eagle warriors, which obviously is going to be trouble for the Arblasts. Um, you know, elite eagles, they're fast, they've got a lot of pierce armor. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be that's gonna be trouble for these boys. And then also, these ones are going to come out this way. There is a hole in this house wall here, which makes it almost extra funny about that house wall. But, yeah, so he's going to actually get sandwiched a bit here. And they're gonna get all. They're gonna get cleaned up. But once again, this isn't a huge bother to Red because he's now realized he's not Mayans, so he doesn't really want these archers, anyways. Um, I'm not totally sure why he got the Arbalest upgrade before doing this. Why not just leave them as crossbowmen? Would have still gotten your villager pickoffs, and then they would have gotten massacred just the same. You see, I have started. I do have all the way up to Imperial Camel now. And I have started to do a little bit of um, raiding. We destroyed the university, going after the market. Uh, but we are not ready yet to make a full push. So we're going to speed it up here. And once again, decent amount of military from purple over here. Uh, I see that. And we're going to peace out of here fairly quickly. Because once again, I'm not trying to make a full push. We're just trying to annoy a little bit. Um, I maybe could have fought that. But decide not going to be worth it yet. We want to save these numbers. And we're going to build buildings over here. And then we'll make a full push later. Um, yeah. We've also built another town center right there. To help keep our production going. So once again. Yellow has got. So many resources. And yet. Purple mostly has the military over here. Uh, there's really no need for that. Yellow should be making... I mean, so, like, you've got all this wood, all this food. I've got a bunch of camels. Why are you not just... He's researching pikemen. But why are you not have multiple barracks over here and building lots of pikemen and then, well, he's Imperial Age, and then halbs? I mean, you've got all kinds of resources for them. So there's really... Instead, he's producing cavaliers, which are... 
pretty hard countered by the by the Imperial Camel. So anyway, you can see I'm back up here. I'm kind of just going to chill for a little bit. We're building some archery ranges, and we're going to start producing uh, hand cannoneers out of there. Basically, we're going to go for the, the sort of all-powerful late-game Indian composition of the Imperial Camels with hand cannoneers and trebuchet slash bombard cannons. So the camels can take pretty much everything except for halberdiers, and the halberdiers will get torn up by the hand cannoneers, is the idea. We're also sending a bunch of villagers over here, and they're going to do some more building creation. But we've got a push from red and blue together. Um, red, protect your trebuchets, man. You just get killed, like, right away, not going to do a lot of damage. Um, the good news is these Jibettos are pretty well built to try and damage their trebuchets. Uh, but, some good action going on here. So the, the Jibettos are going to be able to come up and destroy these trebuchets. So, both sides, guys, protect your trebuchets here. That's really what you need to be doing. I'm not sure why you're targeting the mining camp instead of the trebuchets, but there you go, got it right. And then there goes that trebuchet, and I think he's going to get that one as well. Uh, you know, Blue, he's second game or whatever, so we're not going to be too judging, but attacking the castle with a bunch of crossbows, not ideal. And here comes the, wh the whooping three war wagons to assist as well from Yellow. You know, the pocket player's job is to be that sort of rock in the middle who sends huge reinforcements, and gotta say, it's inspiring. Uh, Purple did manage to destroy this castle before he lost his trebuchets, which is disappointing, but Red is going to keep on the pressure. We've got some Cavalier coming now as well. You can see I'm still pretty much just big chillin'. We've got some hand cannoneers now, though, so we're going to be ready to start moving before too long. But they do successfully push back that initial attempt to push their base, uh, but I'm communicating with my teammates at this point, and I'm telling them that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the pretty, I've got a death ball over here. We're going to be able to push really easily. So I'm pretty much saying, you know, even if it's not necessarily the most effective, try to keep some pressure on them over here with the idea of, at the very least, keep purple occupied uh, because we've pretty clearly seen that yellow is not going to produce the numbers he needs to keep this out. Uh, and then green, I'm not sure where green's, was at, but I figured he wasn't going to have a booming economy at the very least to produce a lot. So we f we figured purple is the strongest player left, so at the very least try to keep him occupied so that he can't save yellow from my attack, which is what is going to end up happening. So a success there, but that's pretty much what's going on here. So we're talking, and it's like, look, even if it's not necessarily the most effective push, just try to keep them occupied, and that is going to work. Uh, so purple is going to have to pull these guys. Well, actually, I think they might stay. Those ones might stay. But basically, try your best to put some pressure on. We are building another castle. Mr. Greeny, use more than one villager to build castles. They take a long time to build. You're opening yourself up to get your villager killed and lose all the stone you put into that. So, one thing for the future. We do have some Arbless over here from yellow, which is nice. Um, not totally sure why yellow has some guys over here and purple has guys in yellow's base. Seems like it might be more efficient to just swap those around, but it is what it is. You can see red is massing up. Once again, red going for the trebuchets. Uh, and once again, uh, but you know, maybe this time he's learned his lesson. We've got the cavalier up here. We're going to defend our trebuchets. And, uh, that's a lot of gold. That's a lot of people on gold. And here come the elite eagles. And the trebuchets are just out on their own. But here come the Cavaliers to stop the Eagle. Oh, oh. Oh, dear. Well, they, they might. They, they. Mm. Huh. <laughs> you gotta defend your trebuchets, guys. Like, that's like. That's like 600 wood and 600 gold. On the plus side, Purple doesn't know how to defend trebuchets either. And the Jibettos have cleaned up the rest of those Eagle Warriors which is great, and so without the trebuchets, this push is not going to go that far, but it is still a decent push, and I think... Oh, he does leave them there. But he is putting some real pressure... They are putting real pressure on them now, which is good. Uh, you know, ideally, you'd like to see them... 
not let all their trebuchets die, maybe build some more a little faster, but they are keeping some pressure on, getting a few kills. Uh, purple, you've got the monks, you've got the Aztec monks, Con convert them. They're cavalier, that's what they're weak against. Uh, so, once again, initially pushed back, but they are putting some real pressure on. Here's something that's funny. So we are on Yellow's point of view right now. Built all those houses earlier in the game, only to get housed right now. We're in the post-imperial age, and he's got 110 population. All right, you can see he is finally producing some halberdier, which is good. He's producing them out of three barracks. And he's sending them there. Why he's producing them out of only three barracks when he's got 8,000 wood... And why he isn't building more houses so that he's not housed. Well, I guess he's building more houses somewhere. Like, just a little bit sloppy there. Need to get those houses up faster. And why are you only producing out of three barracks, my dude? And here comes the closing of the trap starting pretty soon. You see, I've got camels. We've got production buildings set up right here. That's going to be a good push. And I'm telling them to gear up once again because I'm pretty much ready to go. So once again, the idea is going to be... Even if you guys' push isn't as big as mine, bring something so that they can't all focus on trying to push mine back because I'm just about ready to go. So here they come. We've got another trebuchet. Will he defend this one? That is the question. And uh, once again, the issue for them is they have no idea what I've got. They should have sent some sort of scouting over here to look for that. They've got no clue what's coming. They probably figure I've just got some camels here. Uh, yeah. So, here comes another push. This time, we've actually got things defending the trebuchet. And I'm setting up, ready to come in. I don't know why Purple didn't try to repair that with these, like, 30 villagers over here. But, here come the bombard cans and the trebuchets. They're going to make short work of that castle. And now, they know they are in trouble. Because we've got a push coming from this way. Which is not as big as the push going from the other way, but it is a push, and one that if this castle falls, could be very dangerous to them with all those Jibettos and cavalry. Then here, there goes that. And this is the power of Indians in the late game. Got all these Eagle Warriors, got all these Halberdiers. You would think this would be a good counter to the Camels, and it's just not going to be. These these hand cannoneers, they're going to make short work of it. I did get a little sloppy, lost a couple of Bombard cannons I didn't need to. Um, take some unnecessary hits to the to that uh, trebuchet, but the hand cannoneers. So they do kill a lot of the they do kill a lot of these camels, but the hand cannoneers are just gonna make short work of all these halberdiers. But if you look, he still only had his houses up to 150 pop. If he gets up to 200 pop and gets that many halbs over here, he may have actually been able to push this back. He killed pretty much all of the camels, as you can see. I am producing more, but you can see he killed most of the camels. Now it's just a matter of they couldn't get past the hand cannoneers. If he had spent more, gotten more of these archers, gotten more halbs, whatever, he could have potentially pushed this back. He didn't. He wasn't that far off, but he didn't produce more. He's trying to produce more once again out of these three barracks, but you're just not going to have the production to keep up with that. We're producing more out of here and we've got the bombard cannons and we've got hand cannoneers we've got the superior units he also has not gotten all of his upgrades on those either we've got the superior units we've got the superior production going and the trap is closing on the other side that castle fell now these guys are going to be ready to start moving up here they're taking out a second castle there it goes and they're going to be ready to push in here So we've got hand, more hand cannoneers coming up, more camels coming up, and imperial camels are just so good. They're going to make short work of all these arbalests as well. Um, I've got enough resources and enough production that I'm not really worried about taking these losses, uh, even though some of them obviously are engaging with halberdiers. Uh, you know, even though halberdiers are obviously cost effective against imperial camels, imperial camels are such high quality that one for one they're actually going to still trade decently effectively. So. I've got enough resources that I'm not actually that worried about, you know, necessarily being the most resource efficient that I possibly can. Uh, so, yeah. And as you can see, we're going to build more stables so that we can produce more camels at any given time. We're just going to slowly move up. We keep the hand cannoneers with the bombard cannons. 
uh, to try and help make sure that they stay safe. And then we're just going to start sho shoving camels into the town, kill villagers, destroy buildings, what have you. Once again, you look to the other side. This push is getting out of hand. That's a lot of Jibetos. Jibetos wreck infantry, and obviously the Aztecs only make infantry. Which, that's, you know. And then even Blue, the new player, he's even producing some long swordsmen to help. Got a plumed archer there. Way to go, Blue. See, but once again, look at all these resources that Yellow has. Make like... Make like five barracks down here. Make more archery ranges. Produce things. Like build stuff. You're not out of this yet. Look at all the resources that green has. Look at this. You've got enough to produce more stuff. Produce more stuff. I, look at this. Look at purple. 8,000 gold. 4,000 food. A th or 8,000 wood. 1,000 gold. Make more stuff. Finally, yellow gets the right idea and builds six barracks over here to try and produce halbs out of... But it's really too late over here. And also, you're producing halbs out of the side that's got an army of Jibetos. Which, that's not going to work, my dude, unfortunately. Yeah, so once again, we're slowly moving up. We're taking our time. The bombard cans are going to take care of these towers and buildings. Uh, and we're just sending in the camels in to try and destroy some buildings, kill some units. And the hand cannoneers are basically the guardians of the bombard cannons, more or less. Uh, we're focusing. We we're, we're, we wanted to focus on the. We wanted to focus down the market so that they could stop the trading. So once again, finally, we're building. Look at all the. Look at all the halberdiers we're starting to produce. P producing halberdiers for days, but it's really too late. Should have done this much earlier in the game. And also, once again, your housing cap is at 150 again, so you're not going to be able to make full. And lastly, look at all these champions. Look at all these tibetos. Halbs ain't gonna do it, especially you've got all this gold. Why not make some like more cavalry, maybe make some not halberdiers, just make some champions. Once again, we've got more pikemen here, but from purple, but pikemen just pikemen versus jibetos. That's not a good. That's not a good option. They're just gonna get wrecked. And the push just continues. It's slow. Slow and steady wins the race. Uh, we've got camels just kind of running into the economy in general now, uh, kind of indiscriminately. This tower did range that bombard cannon though. Barely survived with two hit points. But yeah, so at this point they're gonna hold on, drag it out a little bit. But at this point, this is pretty much over. Um, so like this here, okay? This is the right idea. Should have not. Look at how many you've got queued up, man. And he, he has plenty of wood. So, build a few more barracks. Produce more. And you maybe could have pushed this back, but they didn't. Uh, this castle is going to drop, and then we're going to push up onto that castle. The bombard cannons are sniping farmers. Uh, just all around not great. And once again, it's to the point that we're not really even worried about taking losses with these camels, because I've got so many resources, I've got so much production coming up behind us. So we've now got four state, five stables there. We've got three more back there. We've got all the production that we can need if we need it. And I've got all the resources that I could want for it as well. So, because the economy is booming back home. Of course, the Sultan's tech really helps with our gold. So we're just kind of diving in here, trying to kill whatever we can. The Bombard Cannons and the Trebuchet are going to make slow but steady work of the castles. And here comes the Halberdiers, trying to make their moment, but... There's too many Jibetos. There's too many champions. Even with the assistance of the castle fire, they are going to get some kills, obviously. But there goes the castle. And the Jibetos, they're going to just make too short a work of all these halberdiers. But you can see, though, even against something that counters them, they're not doing terrible. They're at least something. No reason not to produce more. This unit, of, this group of hell, this group of Jibetos is going to be uh, the killing blow, though. Just too many of them, realistically. And then Blue coming in with the two-handed swordsman. Actually being hugely useful there. That's going to be another counter to the Halberdiers. And if he actually gets them to attack, at least, at the very least, they're acting as a sponge for the Jibetos. Uh, but, yeah, so it's just, you can see when the production started in earnest, started to do okay, but just started it too late and not enough of it.
that castle goes down. I believe that's the last of their castles. Uh, so now it's really just a matter of when, uh, not a matter of if. Camels are getting into the trade. We're getting down here. And yeah, so I think I'm going to speed it up here just so we can get towards the end. Because they do drag it out a little bit. It's mostly just killing villagers from here on out. But pretty clearly it is over at this point. A good two-pronged push uh, by us to sort of squash them. So for our team, um, for my team, I think I mostly did well. This fiasco with the wall was not good. I'm very fortunate that he didn't try to raid me more. Uh, but he didn't. Other than that, I think Red played pretty well. Uh, he did a good job of trying to bring some early aggression, as well as, even though the pushes protect your trebuchets better, but overall, he did bring that pressure, kept the fighting in uh, in the opponent's areas as well. Uh, Blue, it's his third game. We're not going to be too rough on him. Uh, build more farms. Build more mining camps. Build your lumber camps up closer to the wood line. Rebuild them etc. For the other team, the main thing, so there we go, they're starting to resign. For the other team, main thing is, it's pretty much the same stuff I've said in the past, uh, produce more. You've got all these resources, and look at this, look at all these resources. Produce more, build more production buildings, overproduce, uh, even if you're not sure if it's the right unit to be producing, at least make something. Had he, if he had more halves and more archers, he maybe could have pushed back my initial attempt at him there. Also, try to be the aggressor other than purple with those like only six i think he only had like six or seven eagles other than that there was no aggression from the other team at all uh so yeah and that's really it so produce more units try to be aggressive and that's really what did us got us the victory and that is the end we can look at the stats here um yeah, so, I admittedly, I'm probably at this moment um, the best player of my friends. So, that certainly helped our team. You can look at the score. Uh, I pretty clearly had the highest. But, a huge part of it, once again, is just a simple... So, like, look at this, okay? It wasn't a ton, but look, Black Templar. He lost a lot of units. Didn't always do the right thing. He let some of his units die poorly. But, he had the largest army. He produced... Military that makes just such a big difference. I, you know, like just look at that. So largest army for them, twenty four eighty three seventy. I had ninety two, and our teammate had one hundred and twenty two. The guy who had never played before had forty five, which was larger than Green's largest army. Although Green obviously was in a bit of a rough spot. So it really is just that simple. Be aggressive, produce military. I think that's a huge part of it. So. We'll click over the rest. If you want to look at any of these, you can pause on it. Also, that Imperial Age time was really big for me uh, because that let my Trebs come out and kill his castle very quickly. All right, so there's all of that. Uh, so thanks for watching. Stay beautiful, everybody. And uh, I will get some normal DE gameplay up hopefully in the next couple of days. I just wanted to do this one. So stay beautiful, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.